All right, Rail Riders, thanks for hanging with me. I know this is getting a little winded. Uh, we are setting up for parts four and part five. Uh, part four is going to be just another of, layer of latex on top of what we've already built. Um, should be real quick and simple. Uh, then we're going to let that dry, and then uh, the finished product, we're going to build a styrene box around and then dump a bunch of plaster on it and let that dry. Hopefully, that finished mold will be able to... Um, flip over, pop out of the styrene, and we'll have a finished product. Uh, let's jump into it and see what we got. Part three is done. We're all dry. You can notice this really has a yellow tint to it now. Uh, definitely different than the original white. <clears throat> but we're all glued up. You can feel this is really stiff. Actually kind of has that rubber feel to it, almost like you can move it around. Uh, you can feel the bits of the gauze that are on there, definitely giving it some rigidity. These corners feel real good and, and, and tight. <clears throat> I can see a couple spots where I missed, uh, I missed right here with the, uh, the gauze, and it looks like I missed right there with some latex. But that's alright, because step four is now putting a final coat of latex on top, and... Again, this is going to be just like step two. You're just covering the whole thing with another real thin coat just to make sure that the gauze is all covered and, and set in real nice. So I'm going to start step four. Again, it's just like step two, so I'm just going to speed through it. Uh, not a whole lot of talking here because it's fairly easy and it's starting to get repetitive. So I'll get my latex ready and uh, get that done for you, and we'll speed this up. All right, that actually went a little faster than I thought. Um, because there's no gauze on top for anything to soak in, that's already set and hard. Um, pouring that latex on and just getting it all moved around was like really, really fast. Um, faster than even part two. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna let this sit and dry. Hopefully, because it's such a thin coat, uh, it won't take too long. Um, but uh, if I have time tonight, maybe I'll come back and we'll start the uh, casting process. Uh, you'll notice at the end there, I was using my brush to kind of sop up some of the extra and put it back in the bottle. Um, I didn't want that making an, unleaven, an uneven uh, layer just sitting in the corners. And uh, the more latex that's on there, the longer it's going to take to dry. So I just wanted to get that extra stuff out of there, back in the bottle. And uh, you can use that on another mold some other time. Um, so yeah, we're in drying time now. All right, for just a quick tip, guys, a tip, tipster from the Rickster. Um, if you're watching this fairly close to when I posted it, you might still be able to get the deal. If you're watching this sometime in the future, sorry, but you may have lost out. Uh, this is the plaster of Paris that I've been using for my uh, castings. This is the four ounce bucket. I got this bucket, I'm sorry, four pound bucket. Um, I got this bucket for five bucks. Just recently went back to Michael's 
and wanted to buy more and I saw that they had an eight pound bucket for ten dollars which is basically the same price doubled and then I got a online there is a 40% off coupon so basically it's almost like buy one get one free these are the eight pound buckets I picked up four of them and with taxes I paid $23 so $23 for 32 pounds of plaster hope that helps here's what you're gonna need for this segment step five um, first we're gonna make this into a box so I went ahead beforehand and I cut some styrene uh, strips that we're just going to attach on each side with some painters tape very easy to do uh, once we get that done we're gonna make some uh, some some plaster up uh, I went ahead and got some more uh, plaster of Paris uh, you're gonna need an old bucket I'm gonna use my old plaster of Paris bucket uh, plenty of water and a <clears throat> I'm actually gonna I'm gonna give this a try I have, I got an old food emulsionizer, I think it's called, um, that I'm going to try and mix the plaster with. Uh, if you remember back my previous video when I was making the uh, molds for the walls, uh, because this this mold has a curve to it, you almost, ha you can't use a, your plaster can't be a liquid, otherwise it's just going to run all over. You had to wait until it stiffened up a little bit, almost like a putty. To put it on there this time with this mold i want it more watery so i'm definitely going to add more water than plaster but i figured this would be awesome to try and see if i can mix up all those things and uh, uh those little bubbles and um little rocks that you know sometimes uh come when you mix the powder and the water so we're going to try that uh that's going to be something new for me so let's go ahead and uh and get started i'm just going to make some room here uh the first thing we're going to want to do Let's get some tape ready. And you're going to want to make these uh, pieces of tape a little bit wider than than the styrene because we're going to use it to wrap around. Uh, just kind of put that on there. You can use thinner tape if you want completely up to you I just happen to have this one on hand I think it's uh, I think it's two inches and measures out to about uh, what's that an inch and seven eighths I'll call it two inches all right so I'm just gonna take this that right on there awesome because eventually when we get all four this is just going to fold right up and make a box. So let's keep on going round. That was, <clears throat> that was too thin. Too short. Stuff, isn't it? Now you'll notice this piece is a little larger um, than the rest. Not by design, it just happened to be the last piece on that sheet. So I, rather than just cutting it down, I just left it be. And that's that. Now this one, because I don't want to overlap too much, I can always cover up the gaps later. I don't want to get stuck here with one tape on top of the other. So I'm just going to cut a short strip. Stick that under there. Get my styrene in. Um, if you notice, I got a real small gap in between the big styrene base and the sides because when you fold this up you're going to need that little tiny bit 
just to get a good seal between top and bottom. Uh, the tape is going to do most of the sealing and we're going to reinforce that also with a couple extra strips going around so that we have all our cracks filled. Um, again, this stuff is going to be liquidy, the plaster, so we want to make sure that we're not pouring all out over your workspace. And you want to just make sure that you got your corners lined up. Because we want to be as straight as possible. All right, because I have the ends that are my long pieces, I'm going to start with one of the centers here. And we're just going to lift that up like that. I'm going to lift this here to meet that. Tape is a little, little long on the side. All right, so we're going to meet that. Fold over. Fairly simple. Slide around over here. Lift this side. And I'm just making a cut right there, straight across. that meat right there. Look at that, we're making a box. Did not that did not meet well. Keep an eye on those. Okay, now by doing this with the painter's tape, it's going to make releasing the mold from the styrene a lot easier. Um, what I tried on my first mold was I, I, I put, my, uh, put my styrene down and then I actually hot glued the crease down and it worked. It built a box and it was like airtight. Uh, no problems, but when I try to get it apart Hot glue works really well on styrene. Um, I had to cut the styrene out uh, in order to To get the uh, plaster mold out so I basically ruined um, The mold I'm just gonna go over and get these corners Tucked in so we don't have any leaks. Fold it up like a Christmas present. When I, when I first saw um, Jim doing this, um, I, I kind of I, I knew that I wanted to try it, but I didn't think that I was actually going to enjoy it. And it turns out I am. I'm actually having a lot of fun with this project. So I think I'm probably going to do a lot more of it. Every time I watch someone do um, 
like rock castings for uh, scenery and stuff. It, it, it all just seems seems very boring to me, but now that I'm actually doing it, not so boring anymore. Alright, all right, that's all four. So, we made a box. Now, the height of the box doesn't matter so much. I mean, I would go higher than definitely shorter, but you definitely want to make sure that you have your casting covered and you want to give yourself uh, a little room, uh, extra room on top. Because remember, when you're done with this, you're flipping it upside down and you don't want the bottom, like you don't want to see your molds popping through because when you go to cast this, you don't want the next set of plaster to leak out of your mold. And to give it a little more strength, you want to have a firm base. So I built this up, um, I think it was an inch. It's a full inch up. I measured to the tallest part of the, the original mold, which came to three quarters of an inch. So I just cut these sides to um, an inch tall, and that'll give me a nice, uh, nice solid base for the future. Now, just for reference, I didn't do that with the first mold, and this thing is massive. And you can see, again, these are pretty straight because actually I'm, I'm, I like this uh, option better. Jim did it right um, with, the, with the tape because I got a lot of straight lines, no problems. Like I said before, I just used some hot glue in there. And you can see none of this is straight. I got weaves and bobs and definitely uh, it's too big. All right, so we're going to mix up some plaster. Um, again, the instructions here. Oh, wait, that's Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. Flipping it over here. The instructions here say <clears throat> to use... Six to ten minutes. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Add two parts of plaster to one part of cold water. All right, so I'm just going to measure this out. Um, this little bucket here that I have has some ounces on the side. So I'm just going to go like that. Get my glove on here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start with 16, sixteen ounces. So we're going to call it one, two, Three handfuls, and we're gonna put that in the big bucket. So that means it means eight ounces of water. But I'm actually going to equal this out. I'm going to go 16 and 16 because, again, I, I want this as watery as possible. <clears throat> now, I apologize. I don't have a way of editing the sound, so you're going to hear this emulsifier as soon as I start adding this in. I apologize. It's going to get loud. So, forgot to mention, safety first, I should have had these on, uh, didn't get anything in my eyes, but just figured I would mention it next time around, I sure will. 
Um, I'm hoping that got all of the parts at the bottom. You can see this is really soupy. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it all in. It's like a real thin cake batter. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Cool. Um, I don't have much uh, plaster left in here, so I'm just going to clean up for right now. We're going to let this dry, and uh, we'll come back and break it out. Now, you definitely want to let this dry to where it's solid, but don't wait too long because if it completely solidifies, you're going to have a hard time ripping out the mold. Um, so give it a little time to set up and then I'll come back and I'll take the sides off and hopefully we can pop that latex out. So stop here and we'll be back in a bit. All right, while the other mold is over here drying, I'm going to go back to my original mold and I'm going to try and see if I can fill this with some plaster and maybe we could pop this out the same time we pop out the other one. Now, a tip that I saw both from Jim and from someone else, they said to give the latex a quick squirt of uh, soap and water. Uh, just a couple drops of soap in a spray bottle. Um, it works kind of as a release agent. Uh, not much in there. Just enough to coat it, I guess. I'm um, just moving it around, making sure I get all the little crevices. The insides and the sides are the only thing that matters. Again, just damp, not too crazy. All right, gonna make a little bit more plaster. This is really soupy. I'm gonna pour it in slow just so that it gets into all those crevices. Now remember this mold is the random stone, I believe it's called. okay we can trim it up later no biggie all right I'm gonna set that aside let that dry okay so we got past part four which was making the last uh, layer of latex and then we jumped into part five which is uh, building the uh, styrene box around the mold and then we casted the latex part of the mold and um, as I was editing these videos, I noticed this is getting a little long, so I'm going to stop this segment here. I'm going to let these things dry, and then we will do part six, which will be the reveal of the final product. So hang with me, guys. Uh, your likes, your comments, your questions, um, all accepted down below. Let me know what you guys think. Hang in there, and uh, we'll ride these rails together. See ya.